Hi, Diddley Ho, Tracer Rooney. Welcome everyone to the March 3rd uh, TFC meeting. Uh, as you are all aware, we've been on this call before, but I must say it, uh, you must abide by the antitrust policy notice, which is currently displayed on the screen, as well as our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, so with that, we have two announcements. Uh, the first announcement, well, actually both of these announcements you've seen before. Uh, the first one is the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter it goes out each Friday. If you have something you want included, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. And the second one is around the mentorship program. Uh, the uh, date is March 9th, so we're six days away from that uh, date for you to submit your project proposal. Um, so less than a week. If you haven't done it already, please uh, submit your project proposal uh, at the link here that's provided. Uh, again, there's some guidelines as well as a timeline that's also linked in the agenda. Are there any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Yes, Arun. Thanks, Tracy. So, um, so a topic related to Hyperledger mentorship program. So as most of you are aware, Hyperledger Challenge had deadlines for submission. Uh, it's a community run event, which had deadlines for submissions this month, March 1st. However, we have extended it to March 15th. Now, um, we had, a, I guess Nancy had a call um, earlier with Karen, where it is possible for some of those submissions also be considered into mentorship program if they find a mentor uh, for their submissions, right? So we are trying our best to analyze which of those submissions are looking for mentors and then uh, encourage them to also submit to the mentorship program. But if you have uh, um, any, if you know any of those submissions, it's all available already on the wiki page. If you can also go through them and suggest or be mentors for some of them, please feel free to let us know and we can connect you with the participants. That way we can have more mentorship submissions if you feel some of those projects are value added. Thank you. All right, thanks, Arun. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Okay, so uh with no other announcements the next thing that we have on our agenda is are the uh, quarterly reports um so i was just looking at them it looks like the majority of them only have about four or five sorts of reviews done um so please take the time to to review that i did see that we have uh, some questions out to the cello maintainers uh, on the cello report, um, the transact report doesn't currently have any questions. Uh, the grid report, we report it specifically, the, the maintainers report it that their documentation is hard to find off the Hyperledger site. Um, so Benjamin, I see you're on the call that has been tagged as something that you should be aware of uh, as you are working on making some updates to the site um, to, to make that an easier thing for us to accomplish. Great, thanks. Yeah, and then uh, the last thing that we have, uh, if I look at the bevel one, uh, looks like Dano, your uh, question was responded to and the, uh, the project report updated. So are there any questions uh, or anything else that we should make sure we're reaching out to the uh, to the maintainers of these different reports about. Nathan? One question I often have, especially associated with some of these projects that are very closely associated with Fabric, uh, is are they keeping up with Core Fabric? Um, I know that we had some trouble with that when we had um, we in some projects in the past, and I don't know that we have a really good way of, as the TSC as a whole to keep track of that. So, you know, all I can really do is trust that the fabric maintainers on the technical steering committee are, are, are 
willing to put in their two cents when, when something like that becomes an issue. Yeah, definitely, Nathan. I, um, I think, you know, unless we go out and take a look at where the code is and, and see kind of release notes and things like that, it is definitely hard for us as TSC members to see like what the, um, the compatibility matrix it is, if you will. Um, you know, I know some of the, some of the documentation, like I, I know for sure Bevel has a, uh, a compatibility matrix specifically within their documentation that says which of the different versions of each of the different platforms that they support is. Um, I think it would be a good thing if we did similar sorts of things for these dependent projects, if you will, um, or these projects that uh, work with other projects, uh, however you want to say that. Maybe it's uh, maybe Nathan is worth adding just a comment to the cello uh, project report to that effect. Oh, and I'm also also hesitant because I don't know I don't know that we want to create an issue that isn't an issue. Um, <laughs> as just a kind of a a sense from the maintainers that we have enough help that we're keeping up. Yep. Um, Anybody from who supports Fabric as a maintainer or who has some knowledge there and know about Cello and whether or not it is up to up to speed with like at least the latest long term support. Kamlash. Yes. Yeah, so so actually i'm following the sale of from quite long time even last i think three to four years but i still it still is not in condition to uh not in kind of mature level someone can use in a kind of production grade implementation even even is hardly to even i think there are two to two three maintainers only and uh, someone from ibm and another from some kind of uh, mentee for that project so i think I'm, I'm thinking is not in a good state uh, to use in a, some kind of production level implementation. And it's only supports fabric as of now. And do you know what version of fabric, Kamosh? Uh, sorry? Do you know which version of fabric it supports at this point? Actually, last time I tried, it was 1.4. And even that is very hard to even run. Okay. So Nathan, maybe it sounds like there there is a need to to ask the question anyway. Um, you know, maybe it's a, a particular case where you know they could add an mentorship project or proposal um to, to add support for the latest version or um you know david boswell i don't know if there's something that we need to do as far as uh contribution campaign for cello um to to see if there's other people who would like to get involved with cello i i do know that there is interest in whether or not cello supports other platforms besides fabric as well um specifically I think Dano asked a question, and I know I saw a question asked within the, the Discord channel on uh, what versions or, or what uh, platforms it supports. So maybe that's something that we would want to reach out to them on. Yeah, go ahead, David. I did. I was actually at a uh, project call there recently and talked to them about that, I uh, and I posted to the list. Uh, it's certainly something we can do if there's interest on their end. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions on the quarterly reports? Arun? Um, I don't really exactly know if Cello has already planned for supporting new version of Fabric release, but I keep a check on new PRs that are raised across. So it looks like Cello has some PRs that are related to lifecycle chain code, which are part of the like 2.2 release, the LTS version release. So they might have started work on that. Just wanted to add that comment for note. 
Okay, well, that's good. Good news, good information. Thanks, Ruth. Any other comments at this point on the project reports? All right, like I said, it's important for us to, to be reviewing these, let the projects know that we are interested in what they're doing. Um, you know, we, we claim these reports are important. So um, if we're not reviewing them as the TSC, then uh, we're sending the wrong message. So Arun? Sorry to again interrupt. I guess I I wanted to paste a message on TSC channel then realized that previous question was not answered. So this is regarding a comment that I added in the transact report. So I guess the statement we I, I need some more clarification on the statement. Maybe if Peter can help or Grace can help. Yeah, so I think I think the question, uh, Arun, that you had was around um, whether or not we're asking the right question here when it comes to the inclusive language statement. Um, we're currently asking, uh, I forget what we're asking, but uh, do, does your, I think, it, does your documentation include an inclusive language statement? Um, and the the way in which Andrea answered it is the way in which I think it was intended, uh, which is that there's not currently anything in their documentation to reflect any sort of, this is what we should be doing as far as inclusive language. Um, and I think Arun, you had the question of, is that the question that we want to ask? So Peter, Grace, um, from our um, vote of what we asked for specifically, uh we did approve the statement as it exists in in the current project template uh, project report template is is the idea behind this question have you added something to your documentation or is it more are you following the inclusive language statement uh, in your documentation I'm just pulling up the link right now just to refresh myself, if I'm being honest. Um, one sec. Peter, I don't know if you have thoughts though before while I pull it up. So I, I guess the question so is- what we, what we added specifically was, have you added an inclusive language statement to your project's documentation and or wiki pages? And I linked to an example inclusive language statement, which is basically this text that's below here um, as a yes, no question within the, the project template. And I think Arun's asking if that's the question that we really desired or whether we desired to ask whether our documentation follows the inclusive language statement. I think the sentiment was following inclusive language, like up above we have kind of um, uh, like, I think under recommendation, it's like, here's an example or here's what you can use. Um, but if you don't already have it, I think the, if the projects have an inclusive language statement of their own, uh, and they, I, I'm not opposed to them using what they already have or, you know, following those guidelines and just linking out to that, but, but open to other thoughts. Yeah, so, so then you were more, uh, just make sure that the documentation in the wiki has this statement and, and an inclusive language statement, maybe this one or their own within their documentation, not are you following inclusive language within your documentation? Yeah, exactly, yep. That, that, that was my, per, that's what I had expected. Okay, so Arun. Same here. Okay, thanks, Peter. Arun, I think that then the question that is included in the template is as expected. Thanks, Tracy. So yeah. the thing that made me worry is that I saw an answer as no. So I was like, okay, probably this statement needs correction. 
Yeah, so I think they haven't yet included any sort of inclusive language statement in their documentation or wiki pages. And since this was the first report, since this was passed, I, um, I would assume that most of our projects are probably in the same boat where they don't have uh, an inclusive language statement unless they've specifically thought about that in the past. So my expectation is that it's probably gonna be no for quite a few of them until the point at which uh, you know, uh, another quarter or so goes by and we start to see them get say yes. Sure, thanks. And just to expand, expand on the example part, I think the intention with the example was to help those like myself who are a little more lazy. For example, <laughs> my plan for Cactus is just to copy paste the example and then uh, it's uh, quick and easy so that the proposal does not just give you recommendations, but it also helps you implementing them. So that was meant as a helpful uh, guardrail, not uh, something strictly prescribed. Okay. Any other questions then on the project reports? Hi, Tracy. Yes, yeah, sorry, just to back up on the Hyperledger websites that you uh -huh. mentioned. Um, what does that involve exactly? Yeah, so in, in the grid um, project report, they, they mentioned that their documentation, uh, which I think is, what is it, grid.hyperledger.org slash docs, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is hard to, hard to locate. Um, is this the grid one? Uh, this is transact. Oh uh, yes, I know, I know which task it's related to now. Okay, got it. Yeah, so I think I think really it's uh, how do we this question right here? Um, grid documentation website is difficult to find, starting from hyperledger.org. So I think it's really just a matter of on the grid page linking to this particular page. Uh, I know we have a bunch of other links out there, like linking to the source code and things like that. But um, I think what they're asking for is for this to be uh, a link as well. I see. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. All right, any other questions on the project reports? Okay, uh, so if there's no other questions there, uh, we do have a couple of topics that I've added for discussion purposes to this week's TSC call. Um, the first one is this Hyperledger Project Families uh, document that uh, Hart had put together probably a while ago, um, and I uh, updated it this week to, to talk about kind of what this is and to give some examples of, of maybe project families at the end. Um, but really, you know, we've talked about this in the past in the TSC calls around how do we make it easier for people who are brand new to Hyperledger to navigate Hyperledger and the different projects that exist within there. Um, and so, you know, what was it, three, four months ago, we, we went through a process, uh, a task force process where we updated the landscape and we basically have uh, separated the projects into active, uh, I'm sorry, graduated projects and incubated projects. And then we've also got them split into like distributed ledgers and tools and uh, uh, libraries and uh, industry specific, I think are the, the, the categories that we have. So the idea here is to talk about uh, project families. So we've got basically a, a main sort of project, if you will, and then a set of other projects that um, that support them, and the the idea is, you know, can we instead of pre presenting, you know, eighteen different projects, which at some point we had eighteen, um, you know, is there an easier way for us to to narrow that down for people coming in to say, you know, what I've I've heard about Fabric, I want to use Fabric. Uh, what are all of the things that are related to Fabric that might help me in my, my journey of using Fabric and deploying Fabric and 
um, monitoring fabric and, and that sort of thing, right? Or I'm interested in BASU. I know I, I'm interested in kind of the Ethereum space. You know, what are the, the tools and other uh, projects that will help me in, in using BASU and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, I think the, the question here is to the TSC, right? Do we like this idea? Um, are the suggested project families that exist in this document something that makes sense? Is there um, other sorts of concerns that we want to, to bring up and, and think through as we, uh, as we look at this particular proposal? So I'm going to stop talking and see if anybody has any initial comments on the, the proposal itself. Kamlesh? So yeah, hi, Tracy. So uh, I, think, uh, I think who raised this proposal because a similar thought I have in mind because uh, when lots of people interact with me also personally to, as a community member, so they have lots of confusion about the hyperledger projects because like suppose we talk about the ethereum so there is one ethereum and maybe algorithm well algorithm but in hyperledger is many things fabric irova buru besu indi and and lots of libraries so it still is very confusing people like if they talk about the hyperledger so mostly people interpret it as a fabric and they don't uh, know about the other other projects so I think decide, dividing in this, uh, you know, project families, I think it could be a good idea. Uh, and, but better marketing and proper marketing is needed to, uh, because there are lots of, uh, like suppose R3 code is R3 code. There is nothing more than that. But in hyperledger is lots of things. So how we can make it as a better uh, kind of understanding for the community people who are using the projects and they have a better understanding about what is hyperledger, hyperfabric, and other kind of projects? Yeah, definitely agree. Um, I think that's the intent of this particular proposal is to, to see what we can do to make it easier for people uh, coming in. So, Jim? Thanks, Tracy. Um, I haven't read the, the full document, uh, so I can only base my comments on, on what was shown uh, earlier with the four different categories. Uh, DLTs and tools and libraries and and uh, I forgot what the last one was. Um, uh, domain specific. Uh, I think it's it's one it's it's good way, but it's one way. Um, I feel like we need to think about other dimensions. For example, uh, India is very well known in self sovereign identity, uh, but people may not necessarily know uh, Aries is also indispensable, right? If you want to do, uh, you know, interaction-based um, uh, proof of certificates. Um, and, and if you want to do zero knowledge as part of that, you need URSA. How, how do we tell them these three are very useful uh, if you're doing self-sovereign identities or, um, or decentralized identities? Um, another example is, uh, Firefly belongs to tools, that's fine, but then it's very different from everything else in tools in that it's actually part of a programming model, whereas everything else is more infrastructure. So I, I just feel like there, there, there are other dimensions that we should think about uh, beyond these, um, uh, this current way of, of characterizing them. Um, right, if you wouldn't mind just scrolling to the end of this document, I did uh, throw out some suggested project families. Uh, again, it's it's a suggestion, um, not necessarily uh, what we have to do, um, but trying to, to think about what are these, these um, oh, it's pretty much all the way to the bottom, right? So, oh. <laughs> there we go, right there. Uh, so yeah, some initial set of suggested project families. Uh, you can see here, right, uh, the, the Hyperledger Indie project family would consist of Indie Aries, uh, Bevel, and Ursa. Um, and Bevel, because Bevel can deploy Indie networks if you're interested, uh, but obviously Indie Aries, Ursa. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree, right? It's what are the right dimensions, I think, is, is the question of how do we get people to 
take a look at, you know, where they start and, and how they proceed through, through the journey. All right, Bobby. Well, I have to thank you for this, because uh, this, from an educational perspective, is more in line with how learners process information. Um, so again, I've always taught um, the identity solution um, together, and it just makes sense how it flows. So this document is invaluable for the education and the learning materials group. All right, thanks, Bobby. Part? Hey, um, so thanks, everybody. Um, first, I want to emphasize that this is sort of a very rough proposal. So feel free to like, you know, change it or, you know, propose suggestions. The overall goal, though, is that, you know, when, when people visit the web page, when they think about Hyperledger, we're sort of overloading them with, with too much stuff. And, and we need to find a way to reduce that. And this seems like it might be a good way. And we can sort of, uh, you know, we can tie some other things in there, like you know, community engagement and other stuff, uh, so that we incentivize these these families to, you know, have strong communities. Um, and Jim, I, I don't think you know you, you brought up the the categories, and this is sort of orthogonal to the the categories. Um, this this is going to be something very different from the the old diagrams, and we're, we're not going to categorize things necessarily by uh, by what they do, but what are their relationships with other projects? Yeah, thanks, Hart. Um, I, I think that's kind of important. Looking at you know kind of this listing, if you will, uh, you know maybe you might not think cactus caliper fire, firefly uh, when you think basu. Right, but these are tools that uh, will work specifically with Besu. So if you're interested in interoperability with Besu, um, then Cactus is your, uh, you know, project that you would look at Caliper for performance and, and then Firefly for other sorts of interoperability, if you will. So um, when I put this together, I started kind of with the, the DLT projects and that's kind of why you see it the way it is. Uh, and then the, the other piece that I looked at this at the bottom is there's also these other projects that we have that actually work with projects that are both in Hyperledger and projects that are outside of Hyperledger. And maybe they deserve the, kind of their own um, billing, if you will, uh, when it comes to, to marketing. So, uh, you know, like Hart said, I think this is a, this is a suggestion. Um, this isn't meant to be like, yes, this is final and this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, this is not meant to, to start the discussion. Arun? Thanks, Tracy. Um, my opinion on, on this is probably we should still keep the categorization that we have currently. Um, however, I like this idea, right? So from this idea, um, I see some of these projects are listed only on Fabric, for instance. Bevel could actually fall into Beso as well. I know um, it could potentially, I know it's listed under two of them. So are, we are probably suggesting, hey, here is, the compatibility across these different projects that are within Hyperledger. And these are possibly the tool set or list of frameworks that you will use together to build your tech stack for solving uh, certain problem statements. So I like the idea and I would suggest, I mean, my opinion again, we should complement this alongside what we already have than replacing what we have uh, through the, um, uh, the, the the categorization that we already have done. So over here, my priorities would be to group to group them together and probably say, hey, if your problem statement is self sovereign identity, here are the projects that you can generally use together, and here is how they all fit in in the tech stack, and start using it. And if you are looking into solving generic DLT based so problem statements, then here are the projects that you can potentially use. And here is the compatibility of different projects availability uh, within within this group. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Ren. And yeah, this is not intended to be static. If Cello decides at some point in the future, they're going to support, uh, you know, Beisu or Roja or uh, even Indy, right? Uh, Southeast, right? Like there's, there's nothing that says we can't 
add them to that list. So um, I intend it to be uh, changing as the projects change. Peter? I just wanted to pass on this idea. I think it's great because it will save me from having to do some explaining with the with the current uh, greenhouse picture where I always have to go sort of say that cactus is in the tool category, but it can also be in other category. You're not 100% sure which one is. Instead, I can just say cactus is a tool that's adjacent to these ledgers right now, and then people can sort of draw the conclusions from there. And on the website, I think it helps because most people I imagine come in saying to themselves, oh, I need a ledger. And I heard of hyperledger. So now I, I will go and see what that is about. And then uh, based on that, they will start with the DLTs. That will be probably their first correction point. And then as they dig down, then they will discover these other projects, uh, such as the one that I'm the maintainer of. So I think it's great. Thanks, Peter. Kamlesh? So, uh, Tracy, like, uh, I think the idea is good, but I think we should also uh, uh, take a feedback from the community, not just the TS to decide whether this is the right thing. Like, suppose, for example, with the hyperledger we met to the foundation. Another thing for, because how community want to see the, the projects would be listed and their awareness. So maybe, uh, there could be some survey feedback created and we give the, all the understanding about the project and then maybe some kind of, uh, what kind of project families should be there and community will decide whether this is the right approach or not, not just the TSC only. Yeah, Kamlesh, well, um, obviously the community is welcome to join these calls and provide their inputs. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure obviously how we get communities to join this call because I think it's important for them to, to join and have this discussion with us. I, I agree. Um, this should be like, hey, we're the TSC and we're just going to lay down the law. I want other people to be involved in these discussions. So anything that you can do to point other um, folks in the community to this document to add their thoughts, I think is going to make this a better thing, right? Yeah, I, I mean, like suppose creating on some kind of survey survey form and uh, we uh, post on the so, hyper social media and get uh, feedback from the committee from a few weeks and then TSC will decide what the majority of things about uh, dividing the projects in families. Yeah, so surveys are hard um, because we don't tend to get the response that we want. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I agree that we need to get, you know, more eyes on this and, and more thoughts on this. Angela? Yeah, I would say that's beautiful. I, I like a lot. I like a lot of that uh, we, can, we can also print. I was just playing a little bit. You can print this um, a poster. I will print some of it or some of them and put in IBM. Very nice. I must admit. I, um, if I can suggest, I would because it, offer, it looks like a good place for visibility as well. And I would give a chance also to, the, to Hyperledger Labs project to appear there. For instance, there is there are a few gems in the Hyperledger Labs that don't receive enough uh, um, publicity, like this state channel, this blockchain agnostic state channel project Pirun. I don't know what's the right pronunciation, which is such a great project, uh, but unfortunately, it's it's not receiving uh, enough uh, uh, publicity. But great, I like it a lot. All right, thanks, Angela. Um, David. Yeah, just a plus one, a couple of things have been said. I absolutely agree about what was just said about the labs. I think this could be a really nice way to associate labs with the different project families when they do apply. So yeah, absolutely to that. And also to what Arun said, I do see this as a complement to the landscape and not a replacement for it. Just to share, I went to most of those greenhouse task force calls. So just to share my memory of those and if other people were on those task force calls, you can remind me, but the landscape, was explicitly not intended to be an onboarding tool. I remember that discussion came up a number of times. You know, I think the goal of the landscape was somewhat different from what we're talking about now. And I believe that one of the recommendations from the Greenhouse Task Force when they 
closed down was that we should focus some time and effort on onboarding materials, which I think this is exactly it, right? So I think this is great and this is complimentary. The landscape has a role, but it's not for onboarding new people. I think something like this that provides information in a more digestible way is that. And so I do see these as complimentary and I think this is a task that the Greenhouse Task Force encouraged us to take on. So it's great to see us doing it. Yep, thanks, David. Um, so I'll just add uh, some, uh, I don't know, I'll be the devil's advocate, if you will, to the, the labs thing. Um, so when we initially proposed labs as a, a place where the community could come together and, you know, do some experimentation and, and you know, bring their thoughts about what they might do to improve the different hyperledger projects, it was intended to be low cost low cost for um, the people who want it to bring their labs and, and start contributing and collaborating in, in an environment that was under Hyperledger, low cost for the staff um, as far as marketing and um, those sorts of things. So, uh, and then the other piece of this obviously is the more data we throw at people, the harder it's going to be for them to, to figure things out. Uh, so, so playing devil's advocate when it comes to labs, I, I agree there's great stuff out there. Um, and, uh, but also, do we want to, uh, to do that is a question that, you know, um, we, we should think about and think through how that impacts the discoverability of things. Uh, when you start having to explain more, Right? Like this is a lab and it's not a project and this is how labs differ than projects. Uh, it, it will potentially cause some additional sorts of strain uh, when you're when you're brand new coming in. So I'm I, I just want to make sure that we think through that before we throw labs into this mix as well. Hart. So yeah, a couple of things. Um, I think one of the main points of this is we want sort of like three to five sort of main things that we can put, uh, you know, we can put on, we can highlight on a web page just for, for the lack of information overload. Um, and if, you know, if one of the labs is one of the three to five most exciting things that we have going on in Hyperledger, we probably aren't doing something right. Um, that being said, uh, Angelo, I am very excited by, uh, by Perun and some of the other labs as well. And I have a halfway written up email to you about uh, in particular Perun and, and other stuff. So uh, I will mail you to follow up on that. All right, thanks Hart. Um, okay, so I think, I think from here, uh, one of the things that I'd like to have the TC do is to uh, open the documents provide your thoughts and your feedback, and uh, let's continue this conversation kind of in an offline asynchronous mode. Um, but before we get there, Rai, I'm not going to cut you off. You've had your hand up and down. So um, what's, what's, what's on your mind? <laughs> I, I was trying to do the thumbs up emoji. <laughs> I clicked that. Oh, OK. <laughs> that, so yeah, it, it, it's cool. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, yeah, uh, so this link is obviously in the agenda. Please take the time to, to add your thoughts um and you know make this better all right uh we have one other item on the agenda and that is the project health collection issue um jim i did notice that you put kind of a um an update in here about the sorts of things that you think are uh that you've discovered so far in the issue uh right if you wouldn't mind scrolling down a bit just to the like update list three three right about here um so yeah jim you've, you've put this together um as kind of an offline mode but i think that the next question is you know what's next do we create a task force um where do we go from here so jim if you wouldn't mind just walking us through kind of where things are at and what the next step should be yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tracy. Um, so thanks everyone who has uh, contributed your thoughts uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks um, on this topic. I think this is a very important topic uh, as we we're uh, struggling earlier to understand, for example, some of the project's uh, status. I think 
defining a standard uh, uh, list of dimensions that would uh, we all agree on that would define a uh, objectively uh, the health of a project uh, is is very important. I, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, and we need to do the grunt work of identifying those. Uh, and I see those uh, being done in two steps. One is we need to agree on the high level uh, bullet list of what are the things we care about. Um, and that's, that's in the first, so you can see this list as three levels. The first two levels captures sort of the conceptual uh, dimensions we care about. And then the, the last level are types of data that can be used to support uh, that particular uh, attribute or dimension. So what we've got so far is at the high level, we have two categories. One is the community. Uh, how, how well is the community coming together behind the project? How live is it? Uh, and, and what are the chances that this community will continue to grow and, and survive? Uh, and the other high level category is code. Uh, is this community producing uh, useful code that are being adopted uh, in real world projects? Um, and then under community, I think this is mainly summarizing uh, the things that's already been uh, discussed and, and um, talked about uh, by Tracy, um, David, Hart, and others. Uh, and that's the, these five categories. Uh, growth, diversity, retention of con uh, contributors, maturity, um, and responsiveness. Um, and then if you look at the sub bullets under each of those are the types of uh, data that can, that should be collected to support them. Um, and then under code, uh, so far we've tied two. One is uh, usefulness, um, another is production readiness. So this is still uh, pretty, pretty dynamic and, and still ongoing. Uh, I'd like to propose that we continue doing this for at least another week or two, depending on uh, how much more content uh, and progress we can make um, asynchronously before we um, organize a task force. So, uh, so if we can get to agree on a list of high level conceptual dimensions um, first, then we can organize a task force behind uh, how to, uh, how to uh, get ideas uh, so we can collect the right data uh, to, to objectively reflect uh, on those dimensions. So that's the, that's the current um, uh, status of where this is. Would love to hear um, uh, thoughts and suggestions from, from anybody. Uh, Tracy, did you have anything else to add? Uh, so Jim, I think this is, I think this is making um, some good progress, right? I think there's definitely uh, some specific things so far that we can look at. The one thing that I think we should consider as we take this to kind of task force or implementation, however you want to look at it, is how do we get the LFX Insights team involved in this so that this isn't just a thing that can yeah. be used for us, but Definitely. for others as well. And uh, so that we're not recreating what's already out there, right? Um, yeah. I think that's, that's where, where my head's at right now. I also, um, just because it was there and, and uh, Rai was scrolling through it, there are some things specifically in the metrics that might be hard to, to come to. Uh, specifically, I saw one that was around the involvement in design discussions from, from Discord. Um, I think it would be hard to separate out what the design discussion versus what a uh, question from, uh, you know, just from the perspective of, do we have to run some sort of language analytics on this to figure out is this a design discussion focus or is this, uh, is this something that somebody came into the, say the contributors channel and, and asked a question and it wasn't really related to any sort of design um, sort of question, right? So 
Um, but I did see you come off mute. I don't know if you had a comment there. Yeah, I, I did actually want to talk this time. Um, I, I would absolutely like, uh, you know, plus one that I, my preferred end of this project would be to get uh, the LFX team to build this dashboard because I don't think this is useful, you know, for Hyperledger. I think this is useful for all of the Linux Foundation projects. And uh, I know that some of this exists in LFX and is really hard to find. So if we can feed these in to LFX and get this built for us or assist them in building that and say, this is, this is what we need, you know, that would be where I would prefer that we, uh, where we Hyperledger go. Yeah, completely agree. Um... And, you know, if we do, and when we do create this task force, I, I would look to uh, Hart, Rai, um, yourselves to, to bring in whoever the, the right people are um, from LFX to have these discussions directly with us, right, to, to say, yes, this is possible, or no, this isn't possible, um, you know, and, and help us through that process. I, I will gladly harangue them, make them show up. <laughs> All right. Angela? Just out of curiosity, maybe this has been done already by other foundations. I don't know, the Apache Foundation is much older than uh, Hyperledger. Um, do you know, any, any, or any of you know if this has been already done, if they have already predictors? Uh, I found interesting this idea of predictors of uh, the success of a project. I doubt they exist, but uh, it would be interesting to see if they, it's possible to derive such predictors. But, yeah. Hart? So Angela, to my knowledge, this has not been done before. So, uh, maybe, you know, somebody can correct me on this because it's, it's entirely possible it has been done and I just don't know about it. Um, but to my knowledge, the most, like no one has applied, you know, modern machine learning to this or anything like that. Uh, to my knowledge, sort of the most, uh, I guess advanced tooling around this has historically been done by the CNCF and LFX is, is trying to pull a lot of that uh, stuff in. And that has sort of become some of the LFX tools. Um, but, you know, we should probably interact more closely with LFX um, and, and maybe, uh, you know, I know Rye has a lot more experience with uh, talking to these folks than I do, but maybe we should set up some kind of LFX Hyperledger uh, meeting where we let, you know, maintainers and TSC members and everybody uh, discuss. Um, Rye, do you think that would, would be something that LFX would agree to? Uh, I can ask. I, I know that we've had them on the TSC call before uh, for that. And... Uh... I, I can ask and let's see if we can make it happen. Yeah, I think the, the key is we don't want a presentation. We don't want a discussion, right? We want to discuss what's the, the art of the possible um, to, to get to the, the place where we understand, uh, you know, health of projects and uh, predictors, if you will, as Angela called them. Jim? Yep. Uh, to, to further answer Angela's question and add to what Hart said, uh, Angela, you might be uh, astonished that I actually uh, uh, seek out to read some papers on, on this subject. Uh, the chat is disabled, but I would send uh, the link to, to the group. Uh, there was this, the latest uh, published paper on the subject was um, sometime in 2021. And the conclusion was, uh, so, so the author of the paper looked at 56 other published papers on the topic. The conclusion is there's not a good methodology <laughs> behind this very important topic. Uh, and, and some of this, this high level um, uh, dimensions were, were taken from, from the content of that paper. Um, so, so yeah, like Hart said, um, it, it, there's not a good solution to this, especially considering the tools available with machine learning and, and natural language processing, all that. Um, uh, we're, we're sort of uh, blazing some new trails here. All right, thanks, Jim. Yeah, definitely uh, post a link for everyone to take a look and read. 
in the TC channel and we can uh, all come up to speed with where you're at. All right, any other comments or questions on this at this point? All right, I highly encourage for those of you who haven't been participating in this issue to have a look, take in and read and uh, add your thoughts to this. We uh, will only get the right thing if everybody has a chance to contribute their thoughts and, and make this a better, uh, a better thing for all of us. All right, so with that, uh, there's nothing else on the agenda. Is there any other things that anybody would like to bring up before we close the meeting? All right, I'll take that as a no. I see no hands. I see nobody coming off mute. So thank you all for joining and participating in the discussion. Uh, looks like we have a few offline discussion items for us to, to go and and uh, provide our thoughts and feedback on. So uh, please do that, as well as if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the project reports yet, um, please take the, the time here uh, that you have the short amount of time to at least get through one of them. And uh, with that, we will talk to you again next week.